Greetings and salutations folks and welcome once again as always to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me today for Letters from TV Licensing Volume 17. Now I did say in the last video that I made on this subject that I wouldn't be making any more unless I got something new or at least something that I hadn't seen before from the good old folks over there at TV Licensing. Now for the past couple of months all I've been getting is repeats of threatograms that I've already shown you and that's why I haven't been making any new videos on this subject. However, right at the end of uh, last month, beginning of this month, this came through. Dun, dun, dun. And it's something that I haven't seen before, so true to my promise, I'm back once again to showcase this letter for you. And uh, we'll take a look at it now, shall we? So, without further ado, let's see what goodies the good old folks over there at TV Licensing have sent Mr H this month, shall we? So, as always, if my editing skills are up to scratch, I should now be in the top left-hand corner of your screen. And in front of you, you should be able to see the envelope that this threatogram came in. Now, normally, I don't showcase the envelope, simply because they're usually bog-standard, 9 6 or 9 4 brown or white envelopes. However, this one's a little bit different, as you can see, because it's got a little message in the uh, bottom left-hand corner of the screen there which simply says, some things aren't worth the risk. Well, that's a true statement, Top Potters. It, some things in life aren't worth the risk, such as drink driving, or sleeping around and having unprotected sex. But being legally licensed free, and not contacting TV licensing to tell them that you don't require a TV license, isn't one of those risks. So anyway, that's uh, the envelope. Like I said, I don't normally show them, but I just thought I'd show this particular one because it's a little bit different and I haven't seen it before. Now apologies before I move on to the letter for the way the top of the envelope has been butchered there. Mrs H got to it before I did and I normally like to use a knife or something else to give a nice clean crisp cut but Mrs H she prefers to use her index finger as a surrogate letter opener uh, much to my annoyance as it butchers the envelope. But that's just my OCD kicking in there, Art Potters, and it's not detrimental to the contents of the letter itself. So, without further ado, let's jump straight onto the letter, shall we? So, folks, onto the letter itself and the money shot, so to speak. Now, in the top left-hand corner, you can see the title, Present Occupier, and then a huge blank space. Well, normally underneath that, there would be my address and a number of little QR codes and uniquely identifiable to my address numbers are dotted all around that area. I've removed all of that, Gubbins, for obvious reasons. Over in the top right-hand corner, we've got the TV licensing logo. And beneath that, in uh, small print, there's the TV licensing website. Now, I always tell people in these videos, and I'll repeat myself once again here and now, that unless you need to go onto the TV licensing website, don't bother us. There's nothing there for the legally licence free, you know, you've no business being there really if you don't need a TV licence. So uh, keep off it unless you really need to go on there. Underneath that there would be a unique reference number which I've removed once again for obvious reasons. Then there's the date that this letter was presumably sent out which is the 26th of May 2021. Now normally TV licensing don't put an actual day number on there they just put the month may 2021 or whatever month it is because these are produced in the thousands now i have a theory as to why there's an actual date on this letter and uh, i'll tell you that at the end of this video when we do our summing up of it then underneath that we've got in bold and in red to ramp up the fear this address does not have a tv license so you could be at risk of breaking the law dear sir stroke madam we are writing to you because our database shows that, and then in that space there they've reproduced my address once again, is currently unlicensed. You are therefore at risk of a visit by our enforcement division. And in that blank space there, they've put the area of the uh, name of the enforcement division that's unique to my area that I live in. If our enforcement officers visit and find that you are watching, downloading or recording TV illegally, you could face prosecution and a fine of up to a £1,000 plus any legal costs and or compensation you may be ordered to pay. Then beneath that, in bold and in black, it says what the law says. You need to be covered by a TV licence to watch or record live TV programmes on any channel, or to download or watch BBC programmes on iPlayer, 
This applies to any device you use. Then comes the next threat. As in bold and in black, they've got contact us by 16th of June, or this address will be passed on to our enforcement division. And once again, they've put the name of uh, my area of uh, the enforcement division that they'll be sending. To avoid this visit, you need to do one of the following. And in bold, it states, buy a license. You can either pay £159 now, or spread the costs with a direct debit. Go to, and then there's the web address. Or, and in bold, it says, transfer your current license. Move your license from an old address to this one. Visit, and once again, they point me to the website. If you don't need a TV license or this property is unoccupied, please let us know and we'll update our records. Visit, and once again, there's another division of the TV licensing website to help me out. There's also another option, though, that they've not put. You can simply ignore this letter quite legally and quite safely and not bother contacting us. It then goes on to state, if you tell us you don't need a licence, we may still visit to confirm this. So once again, as I've always stated in these videos, what's the point of jumping through the hoops? You can find out more about ways to pay for your licence over Leaf. I won't be going through all that because uh, I don't need a licence. Yours faithfully, Jackie Garswood, Customer Service Manager, TV Licensing. Then in small print it states, in Scotland, Scottish criminal law applies. A report will be sent to the procurator fiscal, who will decide on prosecution. The maximum fine is £2,000 in Guernsey. Now, why are they bother putting that on this letter when they already know my address and they know that I live in England? Is anybody's guess. It just goes to show that these are just mass-produced and sent out by the thousands each and every day of each and every month. Then we have, please do not write below this line. Why they put that on these letters, I don't know. And as I always jokingly say, how would they know if I wrote below that line? They just wouldn't know, would they? Anyway, that's the letter. And uh, that's what goodies they've sent through this month. So I'm now going to come back to you on the big screen. And um, we'll take a look at this and I'll give you my summing up. And the reasons why I think there's an actual date on this particular threatogram. So join me in a moment, back on the big screen. Well, folks, that was Letters from TV Licensing, Volume 17. So what do I make of this particular threatogram this month? And the burning question, as always, is will it prompt me on prod me or nudge me, which seems to be the uh, in-word at present, into contacting TV licensing to inform them that I do not require a TV license from them? Well, the answer to that is no. I won't be contacting them, no matter how many threatograms they send through the post. And secondly... What I deduce from this particular threatogram template, Hot Potters, is that after two long years on and off of receiving these through the post, it looks like I've gone through the complete cycle. And the reason for that is two little clues. Number one, they're now calling me the present occupier, as opposed to legal occupier. And for anybody who knows, who's been receiving these over a number of years, You'll know that um, they use the term present occupier when you're right at the beginning of your legally licensed free journey. Secondly, they've actually put a date on this particular threatogram as opposed to just putting the month and the year when um, these things are supposedly sent out. So those two clues tell me them at the beginning of the threatogram cycle once again. Now, will they send me anything new through since uh, I started my legally licensed free journey all those many, many years ago? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But um, it looks like I'm at the beginning once again. So this just goes to prove, Hot Potters, that if you ignore these threatograms, nothing will come of it. Only you'll return to the beginning. So we'll have to see what will happen moving forward. Hopefully, they'll continue to send this rubbish through and I'll be able to make these videos and showcase these for you but i've no idea when letters from tv licensing volume 18 will drop because i'll stick to the rule of if i've already received it and showcased it for you i won't be doubling up type of thing because there's no point simply repeating yourself is there anyway folks i'm out of here now it's shaping up to be a nice day so i think i'll go and stretch the old legs and celebrate getting through the complete cycle of threatograms. So, until the next time, from myself, Mr H, as always, it is bye-bye for now.